In just over a week is the appointed time of the sounding of the shofar. And Joe is going to speak next Saturday, introduce us to the season of the high holidays. And then I'll be sharing at the Rosh Erev and Rosh Hashanah services. But these are God's appointed times. This is the appointed time of the sounding of the shofar, Yom Teruah, the day of the sounding. That's what it literally means. And year after year, it summons us to awaken and to get our bearings. Where are we? Where have I come from? Where am I going? What direction am I going in? Am I progressing? How am I really doing in what really counts? You know, you may be doing well in a lot of things that really don't count. But this is a season to say, where am I at with the things that really really matter. And I want us to take a look at a passage this morning at a time when Israel had really lost their spiritual bearings. And Jeremiah the prophet was calling for them, pleading with them to get back on the path of life because judgment was coming. You know, Many of us watched the movie by Jonathan Kahn. In many ways, God has raised up Jonathan Kahn to be a shofar, if you will, to the nation of the United States and beyond. He's saying we need to repent and get right or judgment is coming. And he shows how Israel, God pleaded with Israel through the prophets, but they would not take heed. And he was... He had no choice. I think judgment comes when God has no choice left. Amen. He's a God of love. We are living in a world that has lost its spiritual bearings. I mean, honestly, I'm, I, I read the news and I say, why am I reading this? This is so, so uh, discouraging in many ways. The direction that things are going. There is no moral compass in the world anymore. And we need to heed the word of God before it is too late. And that's a word for Canada. It's also a word for the body of Messiah. Do you think God judges the body of Messiah? Yes, not in an ultimate way. We're saved. But there are chastenings. There are things that God does. The day of the Lord is surely coming. And so I want us to look first at their condition. In the book of Jeremiah, the weeping prophet he was called, because he pled with Judah for so long to get right with God. But alas, the Babylonians came. Jeremiah verse six, uh, chapter 6. I'm going to read a portion from verse 6 to 15, just to get a good idea as to where the nation was at this time. This is about 600 years before the time of Yeshua. For thus, the Lord, th thus has the Lord of hosts said, Hew down trees and build a mound against Jerusalem. This is the city to be punished. She is full of oppression in her midst. As a fountain wells up with water, so she wells up with her wickedness. Violence and plundering are heard in her. Before me continually are grief and wounds. Be instructed, O Jerusalem. Here's the prophet pleading. Lest my soul depart from you. Lest I make you desolate, a land not inhabited. Again, pleading. Please listen. Turn away. Thus says the Lord of hosts, they shall thoroughly glean as a vine the remnant of Israel. As a grape gatherer, put your hand back into the branches. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? 
Indeed, their ear is uncircumcised. May our ears not be uncircumcised at this upcoming season. That they cannot give heed. Behold, the word of the Lord is a reproach to them. They have no delight in it. Therefore, I am full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary of holding it in. I will pour it out on the children outside and on the assembly of young men together. For even the husband shall be taken with the wife, the aged with him who is full of years, and their houses shall be turned over to others, fields and wives together. For I will stretch out my hand against the inhabitants of the land, says the Lord. They were on the verge of judgment and they didn't realize it. We don't know how close we really are. Verse 13, because from the least of them, even to the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. Kind of like what Stephen was saying. It's mine. What's mine is mine and what's yours is mine. That's covetousness. From the prophet even to the priest, everyone deals falsely. They have also healed the hurt of my people slightly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Their prophets were saying, it's going to be okay, it's going to be okay, but that was not the word of the Lord. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? No, they were not at all ashamed, nor did they know how to blush. Therefore, they shall fall among those who fall. At the time I, punishment, I, I punish them, they shall be cast down, says the Lord. Now, that's a pretty serious situation. Now, I'm not here saying Canada is in that situation. We're close. I don't know how close we are. If there's no repentance, judgment is certain. Amen? It happened to Israel. It happened to Judah twice. And so in that context, what was the word of the Lord to these people that were straying? What was the word of the Lord? It follows in verses 16 to 17. Thus says the Lord, there's always, there's always hope as the Lord pleads. Thus says the Lord, stand in the ways and see, and ask for the ancient paths where the good way is, and walk in it, then you will find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. Also, I set watchmen over you, saying, listen to the sound of the shofar. But they said, we will not listen. Wow. We get a picture of a people wandering, of not knowing where they are going, and that they're at a crossroads. And I hope that we are not in such a situation. But I believe that this is the word of the Lord for us. As we continue to move forward into uncharted and unfamiliar territory in these last days. We don't know if this will be the last shofar call we hear. Only a proud person would say, ah, I know. No, we don't know. And maybe if it's not the ultimate, and I say this with all compassion, you don't know if you'll hear another shofar call. We don't know what a year brings forth. So what is the word of the Lord? Jeremiah 6.16, stand in the ways and see, and ask for the ancient paths where the good way is, and walk in it. Then you will find rest for your souls. There are four Hebrew words that I want to look at. This is a four-point message right here in verse 16. The first thing he says is stand. The word in Hebrew is Imdu, from the word amad. So the first word is imdu, stand. 
and implying stand still. Stop. Get your bearings. This is a season to stop with the busyness. Stop with the frantic pace of life. Stop and get your bearings. It means the more that we move into uncharted territory, the less we can rely on, well, I've always done it this way. Friends, that may have worked then, but we're in uncharted territory. The world has never been this way before. The word of the Lord is stop. Don't rush ahead. Slow down and come to a complete stop. As I read in the opening psalm, be still and know that I am God. It means that we really need to hear from God in this season. You really need to hear from the Lord. And to do that, we need to stop and get still and neutral. I've taught, you know, guidelines for finding God's will many times here. And I always quote my spiritual father, Martin Chernoff. How many can quote that? All right. Like he used to say 80 or 90% of getting God's will is getting your own will neutral. Neutral. Lord, I'll go this way or I'll go this way. I'm open. I'm, I'm not preconceived. Lord, please, I want to go this way. Let this be your will. Is that what Yeshua said? No, not my will. Your will be done. You got to stop. Make sure you're still neutral. Make sure you still want to do God's will. No matter what it is, God has a geographical will for our lives. Make sure you're in the geographical will of God. God said to Abraham, leave here and go here. He told the Jewish people in the days of Jeremiah, they wanted to go back to Egypt. Don't go back to Egypt. Paul wanted to go into Asia, but the Spirit forbade him to go into Asia. There is a geographical will that God has for us. We're getting ready to hear the shofar. So it's a season to stop and listen. Stand in the ways. There are many ways out there. So many voices on the internet, email, Twitter, Facebook, all of these messages. 